Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. We've been talking about, we've been living some 90s nostalgia big time, and we looked at the 50s Masters, both of the 60s Masters sets, and uh, now we are here to talk about the Walk 70s. a Mile in My Shoes, the essential 70s Masters. We're going to parse over all of this stuff. We're going to look at the book. We're going to look at the track listing. We're going to discuss this. This is huge. However, I want to look at this real quick. I won this copy at Elvis Bingo in Indiana. Very cool. Uh, at the Elvis Fantasy Fest in Portage, Indiana, I believe is where I won this. I'm amazed there's not bite marks. I devoured this thing. This is just so good. Now, I will say, for in terms of the cover shot, it's a good picture of Elvis. I think there are better, more striking images of Elvis from the 70s that you could have chosen for the cover. I think this is kind of continuing the idea of wanting to both go with and break preconceived or preconceptions. You're wanting to gloss him up for the public. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, given the decade, given how much the 80s was just a general shellacking of the man, mm -hmm. this is, if you're trying to make a concerted effort to change that and to shift that, I think, th I, I get why this is where they go. No, I, I totally understand that. Because they also want something, because I, I'm sure probably what they did is they were, they were thinking, okay, we want something that's got, we get, we want something that's got some stone, what looks almost like some stone work on it, mm -hmm. but we don't want anything too complicated because if it's too complicated, then they go, oh, the sequin, da, da, da. Yeah. And they're, so they're trying, so they, so they want to shut people up there, which was something that I enjoyed doing in my own shows when I was doing them. Um, but, but it's still a jumpsuit. And he's got his arm outstretched and his leg is outstretched. This makes Elvis look both skinny and agile. Yeah, no, it's a, and it's a great pose too. Yeah, which is a, which is a necessary for any cover shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this. I think the reason why this was chosen was this does all of those different things that other shots would do to lesser degrees. This does all of them together. Yeah. Because again, the outstretched like this. And I also think the spotlight frames the image very nicely. I think it's a nice shot. I just think there are better ones. I think there are more iconic images of Elvis. I, I can see that. I'm just saying I, I I can see why they you know why why this is where they went, you know. But um, let me get in here and we'll start to we'll start to dive into this. Okay. Before we go any further. Hey, we got the stamps. They're back. Yep. We've got all of the 70s albums there, including Elvis in concert. Yeah. At this point, still considered an official Elvis <laughs> album. Yeah. And the Sun Sessions. And uh, having fun with Elvis on stage. <laughs> another notable <laughs> oversight of the album collection. And the 70s version. Oh, this is funny. So... Elvis's Christmas album. Uh, so I did not do that on purpose. I was actually going to change. I just kind of forgot. But it's all right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, pretend this is something from the 70s. I don't know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. The first thing we're going to do is look, is look at this. We're going to roll that beautiful bean footage. Look at that gorgeous booklet that they included. Yes. There we go. And this is this is a good booklet, I'll say. Yeah, I I love the I love the. Like, why can't we have one of those? That's the way it is. Shots like that is the cover. That's oh, beautiful. It is. That would have been a great shot for the cover. Actually, that would have been a great shot for the cover. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because because of you know maybe because his mouth is open. Maybe they awesome. wanted something a little more stoic. Yeah. Again, I do think that his arm being outraised and seeing the really skinny wrist, I think, had something to do with it. Possibly so. Great shot. Shots outside of Graceland in the in late, you know, sixty nine, seventy era. Elvis was very good about coming out to meet his yeah. fans. A lot of pictures from those sessions. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of great fan shots. Yeah, great candids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have less they have less pictures to use from the I mean, studio. Yeah. So they've got stage they have two things. They have stage shots and they have fan shots. And that's what they got. I believe this is from video, isn't it? No, no. Well, that is a, a photo that was taken at the same time as a video. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I love this picture. Oh, that's a great Ed Bonja shot. As a matter of fact, most of those, if not all yeah, of them are. Like th this one, this one, this one down here is a really nice one too. Yeah. And I freaking love this suit. Got some pictures from the Houston Astrodome. Mm-hmm. The 1972 press conference. Another quintessentially 70s Elvis look. Oh. Iconic 70s absolutely. Elvis look. Yep. And another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And another. Oh, I love that suit. I do too. The pearl. Yep. I love this shirt. Man. Yeah, those... Uh, the 72 two-piece shots are really cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Great pictures. Yeah. A nice little selection of things, you know. <laughs> Heavy on the that's the way it is shots in the booklet, which oh, I can understand because yeah. they look fantastic. Yep. Well, if you're trying to kill preconceived notions, that's there's no better way to do that than to load heavy on 1970. Oh, yeah. Shots from the Aloha in the mm -hmm. press conference. Yep. I vocalize every day, whether I'm working <laughs> or, or not. Or not. <laughs> I always remember, like, clink, 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 other rings. And yeah. <laughs> The sound of Elvis's bling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this shot always reminds me. I think it's on the back of the Make the World Go Away. Captain yeah. Marvel. Or it's on somewhere in there. This. I, I've, I love that suit so much. That's a beautiful one. Yeah. Great guitar, too. Mm -hmm. Elvis's black hummingbird. <laughs> this is, almost looks like skipping. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I, th I think that's a Chicago 72 shot. I think you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. And these these two were used on a lot of uh, boxcar promotional stuff. Oh, totally. A shot that would be used on the Nashville Marathon. Elvis and his band. Yep. At and I, Studio B. I think this was on uh, from Elvis in Nashville as well. Yeah. Uh, another great shot. Man, there's so many. I know, right? And this goes through the recording data, and uh, and that's why we're giving you this stuff so you can see how how exactly they looked at all of this. So if you need to see it longer, this should be clear enough. You can freeze frame as as needed. The porthole suit. Yeah, I think that's a Madison Square Garden shot. I believe that's correct. Uh, speaking of, and there's Madison Square Garden, the marquee, mm -hmm. announcing Elvis's shows there. And there's the press conference. There's the press conference. Elvis and his daddy. Mm -hmm. That's a cool picture. Yeah. Backstage in the Aloha Eagle. Mm -hmm. Sometime in, later in 73. A picture of Elvis and Wayne Jackson from the Stack Sessions in July 73. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, that's not July 73. That is in Elvis's room at the Hilton in later 72, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's a Tom Jones concert, right? Yeah, yeah old August of 74. Yep. So we got some later shots. I mean, they're a little a further, few, yeah, little further a back, but, but they're really different. There's Elvis and Nixon. You got uh, Elvis and the Imperials. Yep, Elvis and Tom. <laughs> Colonel Tom mm -hmm. and a monkey. And a monkey. Elvis's manager and a monkey. Yeah. Named Colonel Tom. And it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the JC Awards Banquet outside. Mm -hmm. 
backstage, or not backstage, on the back of Graceland. With the recording truck from the Jungle Room sessions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so behind the scenes, that's what my brain was trying to say. And that is the shot that they just recently used on the new um, Jungle Room Sessions album, the FTD album. Ah, okay. Even though it's a 72 shot. Interesting choice, but... Well, they were doing that on the original Moody Blue. Yeah, so... True. Cool. Unusual choice of picture there. There's yeah. lots better of Elvis in the Blue Nail. It is It is kind of neat. It, it is. There's something cool about the composition with the track listing on the other side, though. Yeah. That's a good shot. That's a great picture. Very, very cool. And, of course, an Aloha shot. That's actually That's kind of the rehearsal. I'm kind of surprised it took this long to get to an Aloha shot. For real. That was actually on stage. Maybe they were trying to go against um, convention a little bit because everybody would be expecting. Right. And there's the embroidered American Eagle suit. I love that suit, too. Yeah. I really, really do. With the Aloha belt. With the Aloha belt. Just works well. It does. Elvis like to mix, mix and match the belts and suits. Well, yeah. Find new combinations. No sense. And in which, there's, there's, the, there's shot. the shot. That's my iconic 70s Elvis. Look at that shot. <laughs> it's beautiful. And tell me that just does not say... I'm the greatest entertainer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I see why they they why this would not be what they would choose. Plus, it was already on a cover. Yeah, I have a name Actually, for this been shot on too that I I'll, I'll have to say off the podcast. Okay. <laughs> there you go, members or something. I don't know. Love that. That's a great picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Another awesome stage shot. And here we are again in the back. All of, or a lot of, maybe not all of, although it looks pretty comprehensive. Doesn't mean it is. Right. But it looks pretty comprehensive. It is fairly comprehensive. There's a few missing, I think. Ah, that's cool. Oh, no, that's that's why they made it the cover shot, so they could end with that and book, at bookends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that's freaking cool. Because it's like, you know, he's wound up in action and he's just spent. Yeah. I actually like the concept now that I see both of them together. And then you got one of the last pictures taken of Elvis, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. On the back. That is really cool. Yeah. All in all, there's a lot of thought put into that. I oh, like yeah. It well, we are going to look at the CD track listing after these messages. All right, everybody. We're back, and we are looking at Elvis, Walk a Mile in My Shoes, the Essential 70s Masters. And we just got done looking at the booklet and now we are going to take a look at the CDs themselves. You've got the back of... I do. I will read off the track list as we look at each CD. Your set is about as well-loved as mine. Oh, it's very well-loved. <laughs> I, just, I just wore this out. All right. Disc one is the singles, and it covers Elvis's singles from 1970 to 1972. And the track listing is The Wonder of You. I've lost you. The next step is love. You don't have to say you love me. Patch it up. I really don't want to know. There goes my everything. Rags to riches. Where do they go, Lord? Uh, life. I'm leaving. Heart of Rome. It's only love. The sound of your cry. I just can't help believing how the web was woven. Until it's time for you to go, we can make the morning an American trilogy. The first time ever I saw your face, burning love, it's a matter of time and separate ways. Very solid. Very solid disc. I, I mean, Elvis's singles, you can't go wrong with them in any era, except for a brief period between 63 and 67 <laughs> yeah. or so, which we'll talk about in another episode. Yeah. And here we go with disc two, the rest of the singles. Yeah, disc two has the singles from 72 to 76. So they split 72. So this starts with Always On My Mind. And then you have Fool, 
Steamroller Blues, great record. Mm -hmm. Raised on Rock, For Old Time's Sake, I Got a Thing About You Baby, phenomenal record. Take Good Care of Her, If You Talk in Your Sleep, Promise Land, oh, It's Midnight, My Boy, Loving Arms, great record. <laughs> T-R-O-U-B-L-E, Mr. Songman, Bringing It Back, The Quintessential Pieces of My Life. Mm-hmm. Uh, green, green grass of home, thinking about you, hurt, for the heart, moody blue, she thinks I still care, way down and pledging my love. Man, that's a Ooh, good disc. That's a great disc. Then we move on to Studio Highlights, 70 to 71, also known as the Purple Disc. Oh, yeah. Which has 20 days and 20 nights. I was born about 10,000 ah! years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this one is so well-loved. <laughs> the things don't stay anymore. You above. would think from the condition of his uh, case that it was made about 10,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this was made about 10,000 years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we got The Fool. A hundred years from now, which is denoted as informal recording. <laughs> uh, Little Cabin on the Hill. Cindy Cindy. Bridge Over Troubled Water. Got my mojo working? Keep your hands off of it. It's your baby, you rock it. Stranger in the crowd. Merry in the morning. It ain't no big thing, but it's growing. Just pretend. Faded Love, the original unedited version. Tomorrow Never Comes, which includes a false start. Make the world go away. Funny how time slips away. I wash my hands in mud muddy water, the long version. Snowbird. Whole lot of shaking going on. Amazing Grace, alternate take two. That's what you get for loving me and Lady Madonna in formal recording. Another great disc. That was one I played a lot. I think that was probably my favorite disc of the bunch. I tend to agree with you. I think that's the one that I played the most, even though disc five is close competition. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go for studio highlights 71 to 76. We start with Merry Christmas Baby. Look at that back cover. What a shot. <laughs> Love it. I shall be released in formal recording. Don't think twice, it's all right. Jam edit. It's still here. Original unedited version ending with Felton Jarvis talking. Okay. <laughs> I'll take you home again, at, uh, Kathleen. <laughs> Original unedited version. I will be true. My way. The Master, which this was the first ever release of The Master. It was way. indeed. Uh, for the Good Times, Master, also the first ever release, and that is astounding. Yes. Uh, just a little bit. It's different now. Rehearsal, also brand new track at this point. Are You Sincere? I Got a Feeling in My Body. You Asked Me To. Good Time Charlie's Got the Blues. Talk About the Good Times. Tiger Man. Jam. I Can Help. Susan When She Tried. Shake a Hand. She Thinks I Still Care, alternate take 2B, also known as the rockin' version. Mm -hmm. Danny Boy, Love Coming Down and He'll Have to Go. Honestly, that's a really strong disc, too. It is. Those two were the two I probably played more than anything. Mm -hmm. Although disc five, again, was like right up there. And it is important to note that this is, all, this is a live disc called the Elvis Presley Show. It is appropriate that at least one-fifth of the box set is live material because Elvis yeah. was putting out so much live, uh, so many live albums at this time. Exactly. And this kind of stands in for the rarities disc. Yeah. To a degree. Agreed. Yeah. All right, so in the Elvis Presley show, we start with C.C. Ryder. We have uh, Men with Broken Hearts, the short poem, followed by Walk a Mile in My Shoes. Polk Salad Annie, Let It Be Me, Proud Mary, we have the master of something, which was new at that point. We have You've Lost That Love and Feeling, Heartbreak Hotel, I Was the One, One Night. Those are all the rehearsal versions, I believe. Or are those the live versions? It says unreleased at the time, which is why I was... Yeah, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to go, but we'll go through the discs after. And, yeah, and look at... Talk. Yeah, we'll we talk go. about each one. Uh, we've got the master of Never Been to Spain, which was at that time unreleased. Also incredibly surprising. Yeah. 
We got you gave me a mountain master. Yes, yes, something was. Wait, which one were you talking about? I was talking about Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, one night, those three. Uh, those I think one night is from the August the no. Uh, show. Yeah, the oh. Heartbreak Hotel is from uh, the eleventh. I was the one is from the thirteenth, and one night is from the eleventh. Okay, so two two elevenths and one thirteenth. Um, you gave me a mountain master. It's impossible. A big hunk of love, master. It's over, master. This was the first release of a lot of the standing room only stuff, yes. which just shocks me. But The Impossible Dream, um, Reconsider Baby, I'll Remember You, which is from the Aloha, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry from the Aloha, Suspicious Minds, Unchained Melody, so we do have some Elvis and 77 represented here, mm -hmm. The Twelfth of Never Rehearsal, which was a new track, Yes. Softly As I Leave You rehearsal, which was a new track. A la In El Rancho Grande, informal rehearsal, which is a new track. I loved that so much. Froggy Win a Courtin from the rehearsal, new track. Again. And Stranger in My Own Hometown, which is my favorite rehearsal track on the set. Yeah. Even though it, I didn't know at the time it was edited. Yes. So all in all, a really strong representation of Elvis in the 70s. Yeah. I, I would say that that's true. You know, the, um, I would say that that's definitely true. There's a lot of great material on this. So many highlights. Just wow. I played, I played all of these. Yeah, me too. I loved every disc in this set. The, constantly. This was just, this was as, an essential set for me sure. at the time. Man. You know, we can uh, parse over what we think was essential and all of that as far as like content and what we would do and all this. But for the time, this set blew my mind. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good set. And I will say like, you know, whenever I went through my period and when I was uh, 13 or whatever, when I was sort of rebelling and trying to listen to other stuff because I felt like I'd <laughs> listened to too much Elvis stuff. Right. You know, this is the this is the set that brought me back in. Yep. Well, this is kind of cool. So they they talk about uh, mixes and mix reconstructions. Dennis Franti, uh, James Nichols, and Ernst Bikhail Jorgensen. Yeah. So when they're talking about um, when they're talking about mix reconstructions, uh, they're talking about uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water without the applause. Mm -hmm. They're talking about the Elvis Country album without the I Was Born About 10,000 Years Ago bits. Uh, all of those things were... Uh, and then there are also like uh, For the Good Times and some of those uh, that they had to go back and do a, a, sure. fresh, a fresh retro mix on. Yeah. Uh, this... And this might be, this is what I would consider among Ferranti's best work, mm -hmm. even if there are spots that have obviously been uh, improved upon, in my personal opinion. Yeah, like all, I think the sound quality of this, it, like it doesn't hold up to what we have now. No. But I, it, it's very listenable. It's still very, very good. I, I would say it's the best of the three. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Like, easily, easily the best of the three. Now, there is a lot of stuff that's left off of this that that really hurts. Yeah, it does. And we're going to talk about that after these messages. All right, everybody. We are back talking about the Essential 70s Masters. We were talking about the... We're talking about the box set and all the cool things that are on it and how much we enjoyed it. And we talked about sound quality. And now that we're back from the break, we're going to talk about, uh, well, among other things, we're going to talk about what is not on the set. Right. Continue. One of the very first things that you'll notice is not on the set is early morning rain, which mm -hmm. is kind of an essential from 1970. It's kind of a crime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's a crime that it's not on here. Overall, I say this is a much better representation of the 70s. Like, well, I've said that before. This is a better representation of the 70s than the 60s box was of the 60s. Yeah. But, yeah, there's stuff that I miss. Um, they did a pretty good job of getting the highlights of the 1970 Nashville session on here. Um, I would have liked to have seen more stuff from Stax in 73. Yeah. Like, there's no honky-tonk. There's a honky-tonk angel, which I wow. love that song. Um, 
we have i know well we have um yeah we got that because it's a single um but man like like I like most of the Promised Land album, and I would probably kind of overrepresent that one sure. if I could. But yeah, definitely Honky Tonk Angel and Early Morning Rain are two that I would love to have had on here. I also, if I was compiling the Elvis Presley Show disc, I would have left off the 1970 CC Rider, yeah, and replaced it for 2001. CC sure. Rider from '72, yeah, as the opener. I can I can see that, but since they're, I think they're kind of going in order, aren't they? Sort of. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, so if I you, wouldn't have gone in order, right, to get more stuff in. Sure, know. but if you're gonna, if they're gonna go in sort of chronological order, uh, then I get why they did. No, totally. Um, really cool to hear this version of something. Yeah, I mean it, that was and to. Having been so used to the Aloha version of something, I thought that, you know, me personally, it was good. Mm -hmm. um, but hearing it a little more raw like this yeah. was really powerful, really punchy for me. Yeah. Sure. I I think, if I, re if I remember correctly, and this might just be my own perceptions coloring what i was hearing mm -hmm. but i remember this getting pretty positive press it did like a little bit more so than the 60s box set well but again because everybody like the narrative at the time was 50s 70s beginning end like i don't remember like, the narrative including the 70s hardly at all well no but yeah. it's not it didn't get good attention right but it got more attention sure because jumpsuit yeah the white suit. Sorry, I'm going to be on that for a while. Um, <laughs> like, when this came out, I was heavily into the I want to give people something different in my shows kind of thing. Right. So I tore into this and just, like, looking at all of these different songs and, oh, my gosh, this and this and this and this and this. And, you know, there was so much. And I think that's partially why I sort of resonated. These these really helped even more so instill the, this idea of break people's expectations. Uh, and since I was in that mindset all already, this was this. I saw this as a piece of that. Sure. Um, and man. Just oh. let me ask you this now. I now I do think the individual discs are compiled very well. Yeah. What do you think about starting with the singles and then going to the studio highlights so that you go in chronological order and then you go backwards and go in chronological order again? Um, I was kind of. Th it's funny you say that because I was just thinking about it as we were going through, and now I look at it and I think that's a little odd. Um, but at the time it didn't bother me. Right. Uh, and, you know, all, most of the releases that come out are either a product of their time or a rejection of their time. Right. This is definitely a product of its time. I do think the way that they've done it, I think all of the individual playlists are coherent. Yeah. I, I would be interested to see how my perception would change if we put everything in chronological order. Yeah. And just like lost the whole concept of studio highlights versus singles. Maybe kept the live stuff to its own disc. Yeah. But maybe not. I, I don't, don't know. I don't think that would work. And, I, and I'll tell you why. The purple disc would suffer immediately. Yeah. Because the, uh, the like, going through here, like... The studio highlights 7071. All of this has such a cool infusion of, you know, country and pop and blues. Yeah. That, uh, what was it that you said? Uh, the countryside of what? The countryside of pop or? The, oh, it was the, the pop side of folk. The pop side of folk. Yeah. And yeah, with a heavy folk influence mm -hmm. as well. And this infusion is just so unique and beautiful in, in Elvis is there. Like he would never, he's like, there'd be little things here and there, but he would never record it in this pure of a form, this blend in this pure of a form again. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And, and then Lady Madonna, the informal recording. 
Amazing Grace Take Two is sort of interesting, but I think they picked it because it sort of fits in with the rest. It does. And yeah, I, that's the one they exception. Spent time to the, on this. That's the one exception to the gospel rule that they have. Yeah, is they included Take Two of Amazing Grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which is also, you know, well, Merry sub- Christmas Baby is on disc four. Subconsciously, that might play a part in why I feel this is a better portrait of Elvis in the seventies. Yeah. Because it doesn't completely leave out the gospel. It does not completely leave out the gospel. Yep, that's true. And 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 then, of course, you know, the studio highlights 71 to 76. I mean, I shall be released. Don't think twice. It's all right. Uh, I mean, all of the stuff on here. My Way is a weaker track, but it's rare. I mean, yeah. it's never, it had never been heard before. For the Good Times, Master had never been heard before. Right. Um. You know, it's different now. This was the first time that we'd heard it's different now. Is that what you is that what you get for loving me on this set? Let's see, yep, it's okay. the, it's the next to last track on disc three. And but yeah, but on disc four, it's different now, mm-hmm. which I played over and over and it over. It was really interesting to hear. Like that's one of the things I miss about this era is that you could have totally new songs that yeah. you never heard Elvis sing before. The Twelfth of Never was another one. Like, yeah. Nobody had ever heard that before this mm. box set came out. Well, and the Tiger Man Jam. Yeah. Mm, yeah. As, as a matter of fact, I, I started putting that into, uh, not too long after this, I had to do six days of shows at the Illinois State Fair. Wow. And they wanted like four shows a day. Oh my gosh. And they said, you can do whatever you want. And of course, I'm just like, oh, beautiful. And so I did, one of the things that I actually put into the show was I did a 75, 76, a a show of nothing but 75 and 76 music. Wow. And a version of the tiger man jam was the intro is the first one out of the shoot. (laughs) And I just, man, it was just fun. I mean, there was so much, and there was, that's the thing is there was, there was so much really unique and interesting ways to look at the, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Most, most of the stuff that I would have included from uh, today is on here. Yeah. Fairy tales, not on here, but, you know the mo- I, I anyway I'm just I'm still checking oh, to see get, what's missing yeah <laughs> I get it I get it yeah. well and you know I mean I remember at the time oh, sorry folks um the uh I remember as a no, I'm kidding I remember at the time uh thinking that this was the complete 70s right and then finding out that there's stuff that's missing yeah and one of the first things that really was incredible was around this same time they were putting out single discs of some of the 70s albums and to stumble across the Fool album. Right. And I was like, holy crap, Padre? Uh, yeah, Padre and, and, and Love Me the Love the Life I Live yeah. not on here. Yeah. No. And I didn't know those even existed. Nor did I until you were the one who showed me where those were first. Oh, I did? Yeah. <laughs> Way long ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man that's wild i forgot all about that um yeah what was that what was that 2000 this was before we actually met in person i didn't even know it was you it was on the uh you were mike mccoy oh the message board yeah <laughs> oh my gosh that wow yeah okay so Trip yeah down memory lane but yeah there was but so much good material a lot of stuff i mean there's a lot of stuff that's that's not on here but Honestly, if you were going to if you were going to put five discs together, it's hard to do better than this. It is like you're going to have to leave out something. Yeah. Um, well, no, something's on disc five. Sorry, <laughs> you're going to have to leave out things. <laughs> and uh, I may have done the. I I may have significantly changed the live disc. I think that could be improved upon a little bit, but honestly, it's a good set. Yeah. Like this was chosen well. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is part of the breaking convention is everybody is used to that 
super fast Aloha version of CC Rider. Mm -hmm. So how do you change? How do you fight perception? You put the on stage version on. There. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a great version. Don't get me wrong. But oh, I, I get. I, I know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, no. There's there's something amazing about the punch of the you know 2001 to CC Rider. I get it. I totally get it. All I'm saying is like that's if you're gonna if you're gonna you know fight against convention in little ways, you give them something that they think they know, and you don't give it to them how they know it. Fighting those conceptions, I think, is is one thing that they do well here. Now, I think that one of the reasons that they started with the singles was uh, just for sheer commercial potential, because a lot of yeah. people are going to want to know that it has this song or that song. True. And this is the easiest way to find that. Yeah. Because if you'd mixed everything up, if you were looking for American Trilogy, you might know that it's where? a single, but you'd have to go dig in to see where it was, you know? Yeah. Speaking of American Trilogy, yeah, yeah, yeah it is there. Okay, good. The uh, for some reason the only thing that this doesn't have uh, is uh, America. Yeah, and, you know, I, like I I'm okay with excluding that in a five disc set, but yeah, that's not, it would be nice to have. Yeah, yeah, because it was released as a single. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but um, that was just after that after was Elvis died. Just after he had died. So yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so they have a justification for not, but I mean an incredible incredible set and just yeah uh now i would say for the most part like as we said before these don't necessarily hold up sonically right as well as however that doesn't mean they're bad listens no i don't think they're no. bad listens at all and uh this is another one by uh dennis ferranti uh largely dennis ferranti and honestly i mean Especially our favorite discs, that's the era he seems to really shine in. Oh, totally. Yeah. And and I think he did, and that holds true here too, I would say. Agreed. You know. This one uh, this one in the fifties one, I think I am more completely satisfied with than the sixties one. Sure. I like what's on the sixty one. My complaint is that there's not more. Oh, of course. Right, that that, that it leaves off too much. Yeah. But uh all in all, taken as a set of three, it's a... And a half. Three and a half. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I, the, the, the way your voice just... And a half. <laughs> Let's say three and a third. Three and a third. Well, hey, like, they're th you know, 33 and a third. Everybody yeah, knows. exactly. It's like an, like it, an LP or something. Like the big box set, sets hold up a lot better than this does. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's not a bad introduction to Elvis's music. It's not. This is, and the way I came to see it not too long after I got all of these. When I first got them, I was like, oh, cool. This is, this is it. Right. Right. But I quickly came to see them as what I would say that they were intended to be. And that's the start, well, except for maybe the 50s. A jumping off point. A jumping off point. Yeah. The start of the conversation, not the end. And it certainly was the part of the start of the conversation that I had with, uh, of, of my deeper love of Elvis music. And this, these sets played a large part in nurturing that and bringing that to an entirely different and higher level. I, I can agree with that yeah. wholeheartedly. Yeah, I mean, there are problems, there are issues with these, but all of that having been said, these were influential on a level I probably could not properly, and still may not properly appreciate. Right. Even... Considering them as much as I can, these are such gr like ground level, like base level. I I think it might be hard to understand just how much I owe to these, how sure. much I lean on lean on these as what grew from or what became the ground that the basis of my fandom and i i on another level because i've been a fan since sorry don't lose your thought no i've been a fan since i was a lot younger than these mm -hmm. 
Same. But this was when it just mushroomed. Yeah, no, I completely agree with everything that you're saying. And I, w- I would be open to, you know, having remastered and expanded versions of every single one of these. Yeah. Maybe with different covers and titles. I Like, I'm not married to this format, but yeah. the same general concept yeah. would be nice for people who are maybe not sure they want to go all the way to this. Mm-hmm. You know? It, it's just, it's nice to have sort of a, a, a chart that shows you which directions you need to explore. Yeah. These work very well for that. The thing that this instilled in me yeah. that is lost with this yeah. is the concept of coherence. Yeah. And the concept of hearing stuff in something approaching the proper context. Like, well, and I think that's why, you know, for all the crap we gave the 60s masters, mm-hmm. I, I think, again, as an introduction, right. especially if maybe gospel's not your thing sure this is something for everybody <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh and it contains all of something for anyway well almost yeah. all you might of, say almost all it's a potluck that features something for everybody <laughs> <laughs> well done well done well done the uh but yeah i you know i would be definitely elvis is back with a potluck <laughs> that features something for everybody Elvis is back with a potluck of something for everybody. <laughs> you might say it's Elvis for everyone. <laughs> uh, uh, from Elvis and Memphis. <laughs> oh, God. Honestly, I think that these could be, if these were updated, mm-hmm. and now... Because CDs are considered not as expensive, right? You get a lot more discs. That might be an interesting episode for us to do sometime in the future. If we were going to build the same concept yeah. of jumping off points, we'll have to give ourselves a hard limit so that we don't just go crazy with stuff. <laughs> but uh, you know, seeing what, how we would build it, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be kind of fun. I tell you what, this is how we'll arrange this episode. Should we? decide to do it yeah we'll bring Rhonda in here to be a judge right and we'll both be like lawyers and you make the case for a, a track and I'll make a case against it colluding it and we'll see who she decides for of course you're married to I was her. gonna say that's not gonna be fair to you man I mean you know be uh <laughs> and I honestly I don't want to make a case against every track so. right exactly yeah I think I can make a pretty persuasive case against three corn patches though <laughs> Which is also not included on the seventies box. Good, good reason. Thank you, Ernst. Uh, yeah, there's a uh, boy. There's some dirty jokes I could say. It is. <laughs> you, you, I, have, I have ways of making sure you don't win that argument. It's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> oh man. You know what? No matter what, there's a lot to love in these, and there's a lot that, even though again, sound quality notwithstanding, uh, there's a lot of neat stuff in here that as a fan in the time of the time it was these were incredibly impactful mm-hmm. i can't even begin to tell you and i do think they had an impact because all of these i heard all of these being played it got to the point where i can i knew what disc they were playing at yeah. a lot of elvis conventions <laughs> yeah at a lot of Elvis conventions and things like that. So I know that fans were listening to these as they were. And I do think that that had an effect and helped to get us where we are now with uh, Elvis Masters. Because first it was like, we need all of... This was the start. And then it was, we need all of the Elvis Masters together. Because this it's stupid that we don't have all the Elvis Masters together. Then we got that. And then it was, oh, we, know, we need more outtakes. And we need more outtake compilations. We need boxes of outtakes. Da, da, da. We got that. And now we're starting to get... These we and, need literally every scrap of recorded sound you have on the man. I mean, or we will revolt by not paying you our money. I mean, I was ahead of the curve by twenty friggin' years. I don't know <laughs> what you all want, but um, amazing stuff for a kid in the nineties. And uh, I hope that I know I know a lot of fans of all ages were the same way. It Completely. was extremely impactful and i i know i say that a lot but this might be some of the largest sort of groundswell starts 
uh, for taking Elvis's music seriously for the first time in a long time, even by Elvis fans, because when you get so beat down as a community, it was to the point that fans were kind of getting on their own stuff. And we're sure. still getting out of that. This is so much fun. Always a good time to go back and look at some of these things and kind of remember why these were so impactful and why we appreciated having these so much and what they meant to us as our, in our growth as fans and becoming bigger fans. The start of the nerdity degree that you see before you today. So anyway, uh, I am Jamie. And I'm Joan. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. The whole point of the EAP Society is make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history and to look with different perspectives at all of the pieces of Elvis history, whether it be during his lifetime, after, all the way up until today. We hope that you enjoy that and appreciate that. Uh, be sure to help us out with the channel. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all that. Send as many Elvis folks as you can our way. We want to grow the channel. If we grow the channel to 20,000 subscribers, we are going to give away this Elvis owned item. This is a letter opener from 1956, the Statler Hilton. This is pretty cool. Of course, Elvis got a whole bunch of mail, and uh, I am very sure he opened up a fair amount of it with this thing because he had it for a long time. And uh, so that's going to be going to somebody when we hit 20,000 subscribers. And in the meantime, it's good. We're going to enjoy it on the set. We got an Elvis autograph we want to give away. We've got FTDs to give away when we hit various levels. Really excited about all of that stuff. So be sure to uh, send everybody our way so we can do that. And somebody out there can get that. If you want to help us even further, you can become a member of the EAP Society. They get on the ground floor. They get uh, videos early. They get uncut or they get extended videos i should say early uh extended ad free videos bonus content all kinds of extra stuff they're in on the ground floor of our plans and things that we want to do with the eap society they help us with the set they help make everything manageable because the more we're able to have this channel be sustainable under its own power the more stuff we can do like what you're seeing now is like baby steps compared to what we have in mind. It is going to be really, really cool. So if you want to help out, go to EAPsociety.com and click on Become a Member. Select a tier and you'll get all of those bonus things that we're talking about. And we really appreciate all of you, including our very own Colonel, Colonel Miles Foreman. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Colonel. Yeah, appreciate it very much. And uh, so this is our look uh, we're going to do more looks into the 90s and 80s and every era of uh, Elvis fandom. So uh, be sure to stick right here for the next video. We do Quick Take Tuesdays on Tuesday. And of course, our main channel content every Friday. So until the next video, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.